many names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, names that describe his various beautiful qualities, describe his wonderful nature, describe the divine morals, is the name Ash-Shukur. Also Ash-Shakir and then Ash-Shukur. Shakir is the active participle of Shakara, which simply means thankful, grateful, appreciative, rewarding, who's able to reward, give rewards in return for good work. But the most often used version of Shakir is in the superlative, Ashur or Ashakur, both. Right, as shakur, shakur or shukur, the most appreciative, the most thankful. Who is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we translate this for Allah, the as shakur, it would mean the most rewarding, the one who appreciates and then rewards abundantly in return. You know the Quran says, a never-ending reward he will give. So, thanking and appreciating and counting the blessings we have is a, a divine quality. And, you know, latest research uh, shows that being thankful and appreciative and grateful actually enhances your well-being enormously. You know, there are researchers, uh, for example, the University of uh, California's researcher, um, Professor Emmons, has done a lot of research. He's regarded as one of the great authorities on uh, gratitude and thankfulness. And in one particular research, what they did was they took several thousand, several hundred people and divided this large group into three smaller groups. One group was asked to keep a diary of their daily activities. Just write down what you do, you know, nothing special, just keep a diary of your daily events, what happens in your life. Another group was told, you have to keep a diary of all the nasty things, all the unpleasant things that happen to you. And the third group was told, you keep a diary of all the good things for which you feel pleased and you are thankful for. Write those down. And then they did a, what they did was a, a test on these people, which measure people's positivity, enthusiasm, health, determination, and resilience and sense of, you know, being not being stressed. So they did all of that battery of tests on these three groups after a month. And it was shown statistically that that group who regularly wrote down the positive things about their lives were found to be far more enthusiastic, positive, less stressed people, and they, their well-being was far higher than the other two groups. Now, obviously, you know, we don't practice beauty and goodness and moral virtues uh, just for our well-being, but this is, because we live in this age of science where people want proofs, it's an age of empiricism. You want proof and evidence for everything, you know. Whatever you say, it has to be evidence-based. Here is the evidence that when you begin to appreciate and value, when you begin to become thankful, when you begin to count the blessings, when you begin to count even the small good things that happen to you, you are better off. You are going to be better than those who are always moaning, groaning, complaining, and you know, being stressed by the little things of life. This surah that I recited to you, surah number 100, وَالْعَادِيَاتِ طَبْحًا those of you who've got a translation in front of you will see that this surah is really pointing out to the fact that how ungrateful is mankind, eh? How unthankful he is, how unappreciative he is, how blind he is 
to the thousands and thousands of blessings and goodness that he has. He's blind to all that. And all he focuses in, on is this one little immediate problem he has, and he goes berserk. He goes mad. He goes crazy. He loses all hope. He becomes pessimistic. He becomes hopeless, worthless, depressed, stressed. Why? Why does he forget all the other hundreds and thousands of blessings he's got? Okay? So this surah really stresses that. Uh, and it really, in a very strong way, condemns you know, those who are ungrateful, unthankful. And so this is how it begins. Allah says, by the snorting war horses, by the war, by the snorting war horses, striking sparks with their hooves, charging in dawn rays, scattering clouds of dust, then together rushing ahead long into the center of the enemy. Now this is a description of war horses and uh, it's a very absolutely uh, unforgettable kind of imagery. You know, can you just imagine these massive steeds, massive stallions, war horses, okay? How they rush into the battlefield, okay? And they are being, the, and the rider who rides them, okay? Their hoofs, when they strike the rock, gives it sparks. When they move, you know, they create a cloud of dust and in the morning rain, they go right straight into the heart of the enemy. SubhanAllah. This is the Qasam. And then, Inna insana li rabbihi The Quran says, Indeed, man is very unthankful. Man is very... Ya Allah, what was but what's this story about the horses? I hope you can understand. Eh? Allah says, look at this horse. Eh? Under its rider. It goes into the heart of the enemy. Risking its life. Going enthusiastically. Doing what it's told to do. Okay? But here is man. Inna insana li rabbihi That is one, you know, I, I'm just... You can interpret this in many, many ways, really. If you were to take this as a metaphor, this is... But if you, if you were to look at it from another point, as though, you know, you know when the, the horses are snorting, okay, panting, this is a sign of aggression, sign of real anger, sign that something nasty is happening, okay? And what is that nasty thing that's happening? In the insan of the rabbihi the nasty thing is, man is very unthankful. Man is very unappreciative. Man does not recognize the good. He cannot count the blessings. He's always counting the problems. Okay? So that's another way of looking at it. You know, it's, it's a, and, and, and there are many other ways you know, the Muslims have looked at this. But this, one is, this is one particular one I like, and that's why I've used the idea of the snorting horses. Okay? These panting horses. You know, who are marching into uh, against the enemy. Is man willing to do that? Okay. But on the other hand, it could be very simply that here is the spiritual one, the spiritual man, okay, who is struggling against the evil, all right, to please his Lord. Okay. <laughs> He's a witness to it. We don't have to have external witnesses to this unthankfulness and ingratitude of man. He is himself the witness to it. That's one problem. He's got another problem. And he passionately loves wealth. I've translated here as wealth. Okay? And that's what it, 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 one of its meanings is. That he passionately intensely loves his wealth. So that's the second problem. The first problem is he's ungrateful. You know, his vision is narrow. And this really is, you know, very important moral value and Imam Ghazali regards this as the climax of a person's development. You know, in his Minhajul Abidin he talks about the seven steps and the final step is to become 
the grateful, the shakil, to become thankful. Once you have become thankful and appreciative, then you've got it. You've made it. You've got friends. You've got people who will support you, people who will listen to you. If you are unappreciative, unthankful, then you won't have that. Okay. Those who keep on complaining and mourning. You know, I, I, I mean, if, if I see somebody who I know is a mourner, what do I do? I certainly, I try to avoid it. Why the hell do I want to listen to this trash, eh? Why do I want to make myself sad? Eh? Seriously, you know? And we all do that, you know, we avoid people who mourn and groan. We want to hear positivity. We want to hear positive things, good things. And that is what we should be doing. And here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about man's negligence and his being unaware of the, you know, the, what, you know, the, what he has. And that's the point. You know, it, it's about being unaware of what you have in you. All right? It's not outside. You know? Your success and your happiness is in you. You have it. Okay? But it is knowing that. It is being aware of that. And this is what this, uh, this surah is trying to hit home, you know, that, you know, be aware of this. So this is the second problem, that وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْلِ الْأَشَدِينَ You know, he is in, passionately in love with his wealth. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْلِ الْأَشَدِينَ أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُ إِذَا عُسِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ Doesn't he know that time will come when the tombs will be empty, the graves will be turned upside down. When everything that is in them, Bopsira means, Basara means to actually scatter, as though the, there will be a volcano, a volcano, a volcanic eruption, and everything from the, from the midst and from the depths of the earth will be thrown out. Okay? Doesn't he realize that what is there will be brought out? Okay. Again, this, Read it symbolically, you know, if you want to sit down and reflect on it. And this is the beauty of the, the, the you know, the, the, the Quran. It's, it appears to be vague. No, it's not vague. It's by intention. You know, Allah wants it. Allah wants us to think. And of course, you know, language has those nuances and various meanings. You know, words don't have fixed meanings. There are many meanings. And when they are put together, just imagine, four words, four times four, 16 possibly different meanings you, know, you could have if you were to look at them all differently. And whatever is in the minds will be revealed. Okay? Nothing will be kept secret yet. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us you know, that you know, the secrets, you can't keep them yet. No? We know them yet. And indeed, their Lord that day will be fully aware, informed, knowing of what they have done. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who are shakir, those who are thankful, grateful for the many, many gifts, countless gifts. There's a whole surah called An. An Ni'mah or An Nahl, Surah An Nahl's other name is An Ni'mah. The, the divine blessings, Surah Ar Rahman, counts 63, uh, 62 blessings. Surah Ar Rahman uh, alone. Anyway, millions of blessings of Allah. We need to be appreciative, thankful, open, and we need to be awake, really. That is what's important. Are we awake to this, to the, to the gift that Allah has given us and the potential that we have within us? It is absolutely amazing, to be honest. But the only thing is, we human beings <coughs> limit ourselves. And we Muslims somehow have done even worse. You know, we even limit ourselves more and more. You know, we have become very inward-looking. You know, we have lost the whole art of thinking, the whole art, art of seeing laterally. Okay? We, we, we are no longer critical thinkers. You know? We are bound people. And, we need to somehow break those blinkers. We need to be looking open. And this is what the Quran is doing. I, I hope we can read the Quran in that way.